Hello, welcome back to this new lesson of our virology course. Before speaking about another important family called Togaviridae family, I want to tell you which are the main infant disease. Well, uh, the, the first one is measles. So measles is caused by measles virus that belongs to Paramyxoviridae family. Then there is parotitis, also called mumps, caused by parotitis virus, which belongs to Paramyxoviridae family. Then we have rubella, that is caused by a rubivirus that belongs to Togaviridae family that we are going to talk about in this lesson. Then we have varicella. Varicella is caused by herpes virus number three that belongs to herpes viride family, in particular to alpha herpes virine subfamily. Afterwards, we have to talk about pertussis. Pertussis is caused by Burdetella pertussis, which is a bacterium. Then we have scarlet disease, which is caused by a streptococcus beta hemolytic group A. Then we have the fourth disease, the fifth disease, uh, that is caused by parvovirus B19, and the sixth disease, which is caused by uh, herpes virus number six and also number seven. The sixth disease is also called Rosella infantum and Esanthema subitum. Today we are going to talk about Togaviridae family and so rubella, because rubella virus belongs to this family. In this family we have RNA viruses with a single strand RNA with positive polarity. They are about 80 uh, nanometers big. They are coated. They are also weak viruses, but extremely contagious. So these viruses are a little bit sneaky. Uh, I mean that they don't cause a lot of symptoms, but they are extremely contagious. So the people infected don't know to be infected, so they behave normally, spreading the virus everywhere. The reservoir is uh, the human beings, is only represented by human beings. The infection more often occurs uh, during spring. The incubation is about two weeks and the healing occurs in about one week. After one week uh, before the infection, the virus is able to enter the bloodstream, so it reaches uh, all the tissues and is also able to cross the placenta barrier. And if the woman, if we are talking about a pregnant woman, the virus reaches the fetus. And what is the effect of the virus? The virus enters the cells but it doesn't kill them, it just inhibits their proliferation. So uh, the newborn will have um, the lack of development of some part of his or her body depending on where the virus um, enter. Um, the newborn have uh, what is called rubella syndrome, congenit rubella syndrome. Mm, the three main symptoms are deafness, cataract and heart disease. In particular, uh, the newborns have the uh, tetralogy of fallot. The tetralogy of fallot is a really dangerous heart disease, which is characterized by uh, nighting aorta I mean that the aorta uh, is in the middle, in between the two ventricles, while normally it begins, it starts from the, the, the left ventricle. Then 
uh, we have the right ventricle hypertrophy, uh, the stenosis of the pulmonary arteries and then a pathological communication between the two ventricles. So normally the two ventricles don't communicate because uh, it's important to keep separated the oxygenated blood which is in the, in the left ventricle and the non-oxygenated blood uh, which, is, which is located normally in the right ventricle. So in this case the two blood mix and which is the consequence? The consequence is that the tissues reach, uh, the tissues get a blood which is not properly oxygenated. So after some, some time, which is not so much, the tissues start to suffer this situation because they don't have enough oxygen. So they cannot um, do, they cannot metabolize, they cannot have the right energy to survive. If the fetus infection occurs um, in within the 12, the 12 weeks of pregnancy, so the syndrome is likely uh, to develop. I mean that it's almost sure that the newborn will have the syndrome. If the infection occurs after the three months uh, of pregnancy, well, uh, the fetus will have the syndrome, but it will have less symptoms. If the infection occurs after the 16th week of pregnancy, then the physical development will be normal. The most common complications related to this disease are the post-infective encephalomyelitis and a progressive panencephalitis. Then the virus can also replicate inside. The virus is also able to reach the joints causing uh, an autoimmune arthropathy. We have the vaccine. The vaccine is a trivalent vaccine. Uh, it is called MPR. Uh, M stands for measles, P for parotitis or also called mumps, R stands for rubella. This vaccine doesn't have to be administered to the women, to the pregnant women of course, and to the women who are going to be pregnant. Uh, the first dose has to be administered at 12, year, 12 months old, while the second one has to be administered at about 5 or 6 years old, together with the booster dose of uh, DTP vaccine. Uh, D stands for uh, diphtheria, T stands for tetanus and P stands for pertussis. Okay, that's all for now. I'll see you soon. Bye.